Thanks for downloading show 124 of the C-Suite podcast that we're producing in partnership with the Women in Marketing Awards. Uh, my name is Russell Goldsmith. Um, my company, Audair Communications, that produces this podcast um, actually uh, were partners of the Women in Marketing Awards 2020, uh, which was in fact the 10th anniversary of the awards. And so I'm absolutely thrilled that I now have the opportunity to chat to two of the winners, plus one of the highly commended finalists uh, for this episode. Um, and we're going to be chatting about their work and what it means to be a female leader in marketing today. Uh, joining me online, firstly from New York, is Elizabeth Del uh, Vajer, um, Global Head of Marketing for Gaming at YouTube. Um, in Singapore is Agnesha Ghosh, Integrated Marketing Lead for Asia at 3M. And then finally, here in the UK in Edinburgh is Shona Smith, Head of Marketing Planning and Performance for Tesco Bank. Uh, now, for those unaware, Women in Marketing is a global community created to educate, inspire, connect, and recognize women in the marketing and associated professions uh, through the cycle of their lives. And uh, for the awards, they've had uh, past winners from um, companies such as uh, Burberry, Google, Facebook, Unilever, Diageo, and SAP. So let's welcome our three guests. Uh, firstly, Elizabeth, um, First of all, thank you so much for joining us so early in your day. Um, you won the special award for outstanding contribution to marketing brand. Sounds pretty impressive. Uh, how did it feel to be recognized in that way? Well, I felt very proud and delighted. Uh, I remember when I got the email, it was very early here in New York. I, you know, first thing I do most of the time is that I check my email and, and I got that um, one note talking about the being the winner for the award and that felt really good and you know I couldn't help but really just reflect on my journey I, I think that you know I was excited but at the first at the, at the same time I was just thinking about how I got there how I got here which you know it's, it's a very proud moment and, and it made me think you know wow like this is this is the, one of the things that I've been training for so long I normally don't think about the fact that I've been studying marketing for a very long time. I, I studied in a polytechnic school when I was living in the Dominican Republic, which is my home country. And I you know, studied marketing for four years, you know, over 20 years ago, I, I started university, I continued to study business and marketing. And then I started to find jobs and, and, and roles in the marketing field. So it's not that I just, woke up one day in a marketing role, you know, but I, it's something that I get for granted sometimes and I really don't, don't think a lot about that. And getting that email, um, you know, learning about the award really helped me just reflect and, and, and feel very humble. I think that's, that, that was one of the big feelings and sharing that with my peers, sharing that with, um, you know, my family, that was very, very rewarding. And, and I remember that we were all very excited on, on LinkedIn. And it was also a, a great way to connect with people, especially during this time when it's been so hard to go to conferences and connect with others. But how, sharing that sense of pride and sharing that sense of excitement with, you know, with Shoda and Agnesha and other peers, you know, from all over the world, that, that felt really good. Um, and again, it was a very delighted moment and, and there was a lot of pride in Brilliant. me. So it was, it was great, great fantastic, feelings. <laughs> fantastic. Um, Agnesha, you won the One to Watch Award. Um, tell us about that. Uh, so I think my journey has been very, very unique. At least that's what I feel because when I when I was studying, I actually did my bachelor's in microbio. And uh, after that, I think while I was, you know, wanting to pursue my master's, I, I realized that, uh, you know, marketing is possibly something that really excites me. So then I moved from, you know, like a very research-based uh, uh, education to, to something which is, which is very different, which is marketing. And honestly, it's, there, there's, it, it's been an amazing journey so far. And uh, I echo what Elizabeth was saying, right, which is, I think when I was filling up the, norm, uh, the, the entry form, actually, I realized the amount of work that I have done in the last few years, right, which is, uh, I, I don't think we give, us, give ourselves a lot of credit for, for what we do. And I think uh, when I was filling up the entry form, I realized that actually I have learned a lot. I have made a lot of mistakes. But I, I'm, I'm really proud of, you know, the person that I have become because of that experience. So 
uh, I think winning this award uh, was very exciting. And again, uh, I think again, looking at 2020, how how crazy it's been for for all of us. I think it's good to have that kind of a, a you know like a morale boost happening by winning an award at the end of the year and just feeling good about everything and. Of course, it brings a lot of joy to your family and friends as well that, you know, uh, th there's something good finally that has happened as well. So I think, yeah, so it was pretty exciting to win the award. Nice, nice. Um, Shona, let's bring you into the discussion uh, too. Um, highly commended in the best leader in marketing brand category. Yeah, I mean, the, the sentiment is the same for all of us. I think super, super proud of what we achieved last year. I think to be in such great company with the winners and commended and everyone who was nominated um, it's just wonderful. Um, I think as well, for, for me, pride with my team. I think that it wasn't just that me that won the award. I felt like I won it for the team and I got lots of, um, you know, great feedback and support from my team um, on the back of it as well. So, um, yeah, just reflecting what everyone else is saying and definitely we're all, on, on, all feeling the same, which is good. Good stuff. Well, um, listen, we've got three marketing leaders from different parts of the world together for this podcast. So um, what I'm keen to do is is kind of compare your individual journeys to, you know, of how you've got to where you are now. What, what you know, has, has maybe influenced or, or some of the barriers that, you know, that, that you faced and, and compare those different cultures of, of where you're based and, you know, whether or not that's had, had you know, any impact on, on achieving your success to date. So, Elizabeth, let's, let's come back to you um, on this one to, to kick it off. You've been at YouTube um, and, and I guess in the, in the wider Google family for, what, six or seven years. Uh, before that, you were at Sony. What's driven you to get to your current role and, and have you had to overcome any challenges along the way? It's been a long journey. Um... But I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, just finding and, and going, doing everything to, you know, achieve my dreams. I believe a lot in vision boards. I, you know, I, I've been training for marketing, but, you know, my, my dream was always being tech and, and working in gaming specifically. So that was, I was laser focused on that at the beginning of my career. Um, and that was one of probably the, the, it was a great opportunity to be so vision and really know what I wanted, but that also became a challenge. Um, when when I finished my master's um, in marketing, I attended the University of Rochester for, for my master's, and I got a great opportunity. I had a great opportunity in, in Rochester, New York. I uh, got a job right, you know, when I graduated, uh, but it was it wasn't the right fit, and I think that was a challenge. I, I started basically that past master's career in an investment management company um, in the financial service industry. Um, and it was just not the right fit. And I felt that that was a, a challenge. Um, and, and it was a challenge that really opened my eyes to, okay, now you need to focus and make a plan to really find the, the right cultural fit. Meaning, you know, a company that shared my values, a company where I felt that I would you know, have a great time, a company where I would feel that I will find great teams for collaboration, where I could be super creative. Um, and that was a challenge, you know, just really thinking, okay, you find you found the first job, that's the one, it was great. But really overcoming that through just making plans. And I think that's something that happens a lot with uh, people like us just graduating from college now, where it's like, well, you know, I, I'm just going to find a job. But I think it's really important to, um, yes, find the, the, find a job, but also continue working towards finding the right job. Um, and that was a challenge for me, just finding the, the, the right cultural fit. And, and the way that I really overcome it was just being laser focused, making a plan and really trying to find the, the right place, uh, which eventually I did. Um, when I moved to the Bay Area, I found my dream job working at PlayStation. And then from, from there to where I am today has been amazing. Just, you know, I've been very lucky to find great managers, great mentors through, you know, throughout my career in the past few years that I've been in the Bay Area. And people that really helped me bring all my dreams come true in the sense of, you know, finding the right roles. Um, gaming, again, has been, it's, it's a big passion that I have and, and finding the right um, roles within the company over the past, uh, at Google over the past six, almost seven years has been just a, a blessing for me. And it and it all has been because 
I looked at that challenge and then found a way to to make a plan and, and overcome it. Shona, I guess uh, 14 years uh, plus in, in banking is maybe slightly Quite different experience. Difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny because just listening to what you were saying, um, I've been in the bank for yeah 14 years and you'd, you'd think it would be repetitive and certainly in banking and financial services, but I think that working with the the brand, you know, equity that we have in at Tesco, um, really, I mean, I love working at the bank, um, and I, I've I've stayed there for so long because I've been able to move around within the bank as well. So I think that, um, the organisations really supported you, um, and also something you said about you 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 knew what you wanted to go for and you went after it. I love that. I I certainly feel like I've kind of fallen into some roles as I've been going along the way. Um, but I knew that I wanted to work in marketing and that's definitely where my passion was. Um, so I've probably um, learned as much as I could in one area and then the next job and the next opportunity probably presented itself to me, certainly as, the, as marketing's evolved over time as well. My role is therefore had to evolve and grow as well. So um, yeah, slight, slightly different experience. <laughs> Agnesha, how about yourself? I think it's been uh, very different for me. So when I started off, uh, I started my career in advertising. And uh, this was just right out uh, um, after college. And at that time, uh, there was a lot of focus on traditional media. So everybody wanted to do TV and print. And, uh, you know, that's where all the monies were. And uh, I remember Facebook and, and Google, you know, they had already come in. But in India at that time, uh, People were not sure how to use, uh, you know, those platforms and those channels, what, what to do exactly. So uh, I think uh, as I, I think I, I agree with Shauna, some of my roles have been where, you know, some of my seniors have seen potential and, you know, they, they, they thought I would be a good fit and, you know, they've recommended me for, for those positions or they've just encouraged me to take up a new challenge. And I think my movement into digital possibly happen because of you know that confidence that trust or even that faith that I could I could possibly uh, take up this challenge and deliver and, and and I remember because I think I was uh, you know I was uh, talking to a colleague a few days back and I was saying that you know it's just funny that how none of my seniors wanted to do anything with digital at that time because they knew that digital was just getting like you know two percent or five percent of the total client's budget and everybody wanted to be focused just on the mainstream media and uh, how, uh, you know, digital is so different with, you know, you, you just don't need to know about the platform. You need to know how it works, how people engage. And there was so much learning that I had to do. Uh, but I felt that, you know, the, the entry or when I moved into that role, I think it was, you know, right place, right time for me because it, it definitely helped me in my career because I think there are today very few people who can say that, you know, they have, a decade of experience doing digital because I'm, I'm possibly one of those few people uh, because I started early. So, so that has been, I think, uh, uh, the way my career has progressed, which is I have also been very, very open to, to challenges and to, to experiments and to new roles. And I think the other thing which I have uh, been always looking forward to is, uh, you know, gaining experience across uh, different markets. So uh, when I started my career, of course, my focus was one country, which is India. However, being in Asia, I think it, it did open up quite a lot of doors for me. And uh, uh, something that I was always looking forward to was seeing how I could work across the different Asian countries. And uh, that is something which has happened in the last uh, five to six years for me, which is I have got the, the experience, the exposure of working in Asia, which is so dynamic, so diverse, uh, different languages, different cultures. And that's something that, you know, uh, excites me and that helps me go back to work and, uh, you know, learn something new every day. So I think these two things definitely, you know, encourage me as a marketer, uh, you know, to, to look forward to. Do you guys, um, can you admit to any mistakes that you've made along, along the way to get to, to where you've you know, you, you to achieve. You know, in achieving your successes, Agnesha, let's let's stick with you. So many, I could actually think <laughs> of so many, <laughs> uh, but I think one uh, which which really stands out for me. So, uh, I moved to Singapore close to four years back, and uh, uh, so so one thing that I possibly did not uh, think about a lot at that time was uh, how even 
if Singapore is based in Asia, how culturally different the place is and uh, how some things that I did back home in India when it came to engaging with my peers or my clients, uh, I could not use that, you know, that same approach and, and you know, the same way of working in, in Singapore where, you know, uh, I possibly had to be a lot more, uh, I had to tone down the way I spoke. Uh, I had to be very thoughtful and respectful of, uh, you know, uh, seniors in the room uh, uh, so that, you know, I was making my point clearly and I was not offending anyone. Uh, and of course, you know, how you build relationships. So I think uh, if you guys have worked with a lot of Asian colleagues, you'll realize that it's very, very relationship based over uh, it being more transactional, the work. You can actually get a lot of things done in Asia just because of, you know, the kind of relationship you have with people. And I think that's something that I have, uh, I learned a little late after I took up my role in Singapore, which is, uh, I, I was very task oriented. I was very, you know, goal, goal oriented and goal focused, like, oh, we just need to do this. And, you know, it was very instructional for me when I wanted to work with people. And then I realized that that's not something which works well, which is people prefer relationship. People want to know you more before they start supporting you, before they start working with you. So I think that was something that, uh, you know, I, I shouldn't have possibly uh, tried to do earlier, but I think I've learned it now. And uh, it really, really helps me in the way I work with different people across Asia. Um, Elizabeth, Jenny, you're both nodding along there. I don't know if you've had similar experiences. Elizabeth, how about yourself? Yeah, so many. Um... So, so many. I, I mean, I think and, and not a specific mistake, but just like something that I've learned throughout the years is just taking time to slow down. Um, I'm sure there, I, I can't think of a specific example. I'm sure there has been something that I haven't done fully, you know, to perfection because I haven't slowed down. But that's something that I that I always keep in mind to avoid, like hu to avoid huge mistakes. It's really taking time to to plan things, taking time to bring the right people to the fold, you know, the right people that can help make decisions, the right people that can execute a big idea. Um, I trade at times like making a meal, right? Like if to, to execute a, a good campaign, um, for instance, you need to have, you know, the right cooks, right? So you need to have the, the right set of people that can help you with execution, the right people that can help you with that attention to detail to make sure that you get everything right, um, you know, the right agencies that can help you bring things to life. I think that's really important. Um, and for that, you know, there's a lot of patience and, and that's something that I've learned. I'm, I'm a very, I mean, I'm an ideas person. I wake up and I was like, I, I want, you know, sometimes I wake up with, you know, I want to paint a wool blue, you know, at work. And, and it's something that I've learned to, okay, do you really want to do that? And then slowing down and again, talking to peers and bringing the right people to, to help me bring a different perspective. Um, and, and that's something that I'm very mindful for, um, just so I don't do you know things wrongfully. Um, just the patience and, and slowing things down and, and being mindful of, of how my decisions and, and, and my ideas and my thinking uh, can impact in, in a positive or a negative way, you know, my organization and, you know, my teams and, and a lot of my personal life as well. Shona? Yeah, I'm, I'm nodding away. You mentioned obviously attention to detail and how your, your, in, your, your impact um, on people and mistakes happen and mistakes happen all the time. Um, and I think it's how you react to those mistakes. And, and I always, um, think back to um, in one of my very first day, um, agency days, um, I put the wrong phone number in an ad. It was, you know, that's a mistake. Like that's a bit, yeah, exactly. It's a, um, but it happens and it's how you deal with it. And it's how the people around you support you to, to make it right. Because if you don't learn from a mistake, that's when you've really made a mistake. So I do think that when things like that happen now, um, so I, can, I can feel it for people in my team when something happens and you, can, you just know they're going home and they're worrying about that mistake. But um, we as leaders have a, you know, a responsibility to try and help that person make sure they learn from it um, and make sure that we all as a team learn from it as well. So yeah, 
I think um, I, I agree with, with that in attention to detail. Brilliant. I never made that mistake again, by the way. <laughs> no, no. Triple, triple check every phone number ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I mean, you, you just touched on it there in terms of, uh, you know, as, as leaders. I, I just want to, I, I guess, you know, come on to this topic. You know, we're recording this, you know, whilst incredibly still in the midst of, of, a, of you know, the COVID pandemic. I mean, h- how has this last year impacted you know your work how, how have you navigated the year you know and you know how has it challenged you um as a leader during you know during that time so um Sh- Shona let's let's stick with you here yeah I mean uh, I've had the added complication of tantruming toddlers and homeschooling um to contend with as well so I do think that everyone this year, um, sorry, last year in 2020, um, dealing with what they were dealing with, as well as the unknown. Um, I was thrown into um, um, leading a comm squad for, for the company, which we hadn't had before. So there's no right or wrong answers to it. There's just, you just have to get on with it. Um, and I think my imposter syndrome sometimes kicks in when I'm asked to take the lead on something that we've never done before. But just expl- no... ex- explain what a comms squ- squad is. Well, I, we didn't really know, but we decided to have one. Um, right. So obviously my, my, my marketing team were dealing with the, the obviously the, the marketing messages and the proposition and that all changed to servicing and helping our customers overnight. Um, and all of a sudden we were all working from home and we had internal messages going out, colleague messages, external messages, operational messages. We needed to get our arms around it um, and be able to speak as one voice um, and make sure that um, everyone was aware of what was going on. Um, so, I mean, at the start of the phone call from my director saying, so you're going to lead this comm squad, Shona, to the end of the phone call, I was already thinking, right, how are we going to do it? How are we going to get you know daily stand-ups and get people together? But there's still that element of in that first 30 seconds of taking a deep breath going, how are we going to do this? Um, but you just do and you just get on with it. So I, I think that, I'm, again, we've used the word pride a lot um, on this call already, but just so much pride in the team for coming on that you know journey with us. And um, I mean, this is great speaking to all of you from different parts of the world, from your home. I've got to see into everyone in my company's home. I mean, I've met children and partners and cats and fish. And, you know, I've really, I've got to know people a lot better than I did before, weirdly, um, from being in the office with them. So I do think from a journey point of view, last year has really, you know, it's, it's made me believe I can do a lot more and I can take on a lot more. And sometimes it gets thrust upon you and you've just got to run with it sure um agnesia how's that compared to your experience over in asia okay so i think with asia uh, the way we've always worked is uh, uh, so travel has been a big part of what we do because you know uh, whenever we have any campaigns coming up any programs coming up you, we tend to go to the to the specific country, spend time with the country teams uh, understand the product the solution the customers and then, uh, you know, so this, this entire process is something which takes anywhere between two to four days. And that's when you build the connection, you know, the face-to-face interactions, uh, the entire bonding that happens, the trust that happens. And of course, then you come back uh, to, to your, uh, you know, to your home country or the country you're working from. And then you start working on the project and, and people know you. So there is, there is a lot of trust, which has already been built because of those, you know, two to four days of interactions that you have. Um, during those uh, workshops and those sessions and uh, because of COVID we had to actually let go of all of that you know we, we really didn't know what to do then so there were the challenges were not only uh, you know how do we sell our products to our customers but it was internal as well that how do we now come up with a new model uh, because there, there is already a successful model you know which has worked for us for so many years uh, which has given us results and now suddenly because of a pandemic, we have to think that what would be a good way of engaging people in different parts of Asia, coming up with strategy, how to make it interesting, because I'm not sure how, how people would feel like sitting in front of their laptops with their, with their, with their, you know, with their cameras on for eight to nine hours. Uh, will we actually make it like a meaningful engagement? So there were quite a lot of ifs and buts over there, but. Uh, I think uh, I agree with Shauna over here is that uh, people I think have really stepped up uh, during this occasion. Uh, And I feel that 
even within my company i think uh, senior leaders have played a very very important role because i think they are the one who who drive the change who drive the change in mindset who are the ones who are uh, you know telling people that it's okay to make mistakes it's okay to fail and i think that's something which which this pandemic has given a lot of us which is it has given us the opportunity to learn and experiment with new things and uh, i i think that i can possibly say that over the last 7 to 8 months we have been able to develop possibly a, a good replacement model so i think even after the pandemic is over uh, i hope that soon but as soon uh, you know i i know that we have developed a new model through which we can still effectively work with each other uh, and which will again be helpful for the business because you know with with the reduction in travel cost etc uh, it will at the end benefit the company so yeah so this is how the year has been but i feel people have played a very important role in wanting to make the difference wanting to you know be together and of course you know having a common goal uh which is driven by you know how even my senior leadership's uh team looks at uh, wanting to drive that change within the company elizabeth i echo everything that agnesha and shona said I, i i do miss traveling and i you know being in a global role to agnesha's point it's very challenging to to really wear the the local and the regional hats we that that's one of the things that i have affected me personally a lot being able to to travel and and connect with you know my in my case I work a lot with content creators on on the platform and and we we have to know what's happening in region to be able to build the great programs and great campaigns for them uh but I do think that one of the things that have uh the pandemic really given us the opportunity but also challenges to us marketers and as leaders um especially in in entertainment and in brands and technology is is really that it has challenges to become more innovative right i feel like as marketers like you know end of the year you create a marketing plan and and a lot of times it's like well what has worked in the past what hasn't and and in a world where uh you know marketing is evolving a lot from for for a lot of things right there's a lot of trade shows and now we're all being challenged to rethink how how do we bring those trade shows in face to face experiences to real life so i i think that we're seeing a lot of brands um really pay more attention to to the digital world and really rethinking how we can use digital tools um like live streaming and social media to to a bring people together to make sure that we're um fostering connections with whoever our, our target audiences are um but it's really challenging just to to to, to really pivot our thinking and really pivot our tactics um again i feel like a lot of times we just keep doing what has worked in the past and and now we you know we have that opportunity of just be super innovative um you know break the the traditional marketing plans that we do and and really thinking a i think digital um luckily we have amazing technology um that I can even imagine how our works would have been if this would have happened, you know, 15 20 years ago. It would have been very different, but the the power of accessibility, the power of technology, um and all the tools that we have as marketers now, um you know, we just have to rethink. There's a lot of learning, uh, you know, there especially if you know, for people that have been in the in industry in, in the field of marketing for a long time, that that's a challenge. You have to learn new tools. You need to probably find people that speak a completely different tech language and that can be challenging depending on where you are in the organization um but it's also an opportunity just to continue innovating i think that has been something that's very core to to marketing overall so now is the time to really innovate rethink um and pivot our strategies um so they can last you know we don't know how for how long we're going to be in this situation but that we can really continue um you know bringing great products that we continue bringing joy which is joy which is something that we do a lot and that we can do it long term in an efficient way which i think it's something that um digital really allows us to do okay so i just want to um change topic slightly um i mean obviously given you, you've all won marketing related awards what i'm keen to do is find out how much marketing and therefore obviously your role has changed in your time in the industry and and how you've adapted um so elizabeth let's uh, start with you well as i was saying i think 
the 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 world is really shifting um even you know before covid to to all things digital when i started my career it was a lot about prints and flyers it was a lot about um you know going knocking doors to sell a product and now it's completely different now we have uh social media for instance where you know you can sell a product just with a picture and everything is just a tap away so i think things are really evolving to to this digital world which is it's, it's good but it's also it's you know it's also a lot to learn and, and it's also scary um and i and i'm excited to see what happens next i'm excited to see how how we use more ar technology for example how we can link more on live streaming events you know and, and really reach bigger audiences um instead of you know a small niches of group with the work that we do so that that's that's something that i'm paying a lot of attention i think um how things are evolving to more of a mobile world it's it's something something that marketers have to learn and, and something that we need to adapt you know we're not longer building campaigns just for one channel or two we're building campaigns for for multiple channels now and and it's something that we need to um, learn how to, it's something that we need to be ready for um, and continue being able to be flexible in, in our careers and in how we lead our teams um, so we can build the right programs and campaigns using everything that is just evolving and happening in, in the industry. I think sometimes you can have too much data um, and I think that for, for me it's the, it's the interpretation of that data and you know we're never going to be overcome by robots interpreting the data because we need to be able to really understand it and, and add that value there. And for me, it's real time data as well. I think we're moving into which I'm quite excited about. Um, I think gone are the days of putting something out there and then analyzing afterwards, what did it do for you? Um, so for me, that's, that's the exciting bit that we're coming into and, and pivoting probably all businesses away from uh, up, towards value rather than just a sale but what is that overall value and what is the lifetime value um, of our customers really understanding our customers and what, what they want out of the next five years ten years and um, certainly from a banking point of view um, rather than just an immediate you know sale in the door so to me that's that's a really exciting place to be um, and I think marketing's at the heart of, of helping to drive that for the business. How about yourself, Ignisha? So I think when I was talking about, you know, how my journey started and how the focus was on traditional media, I've actually seen things, uh, you know, there's this been this major paradigm shift in terms of how we do marketing today. Uh, so I think I started with, with social media, with websites. Uh, you know, we were focusing so much on, uh, you know, just laptops or you know just computer screens uh, you know how do you build a U ux ui for, for for customers when they were uh, using uh, laptops to 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 do all the work and and how we've seen that evolve to uh, you know a mobile first approach today where everything that we do you know in marketing we have to see how it looks on your mobile screen and how can you uh, you know make a person just you know like a thumb stopping experience because otherwise we're just scrolling right so as a marketer that's one of my biggest challenge which is how do i create content which is thumb stopping which is uh, which makes the customer stop which makes the customer view the content and of course at the end of the day uh, i think uh, marketing i agree with shona when she says that you know it's about the total value but at the end of the day i think all of us are responsible for our business kpis which is we need to show effectiveness with all the marketing activities that we do so there is there is a lot of pressure today on us to to reinvent ourselves uh, you know in terms of the the activities that we do the way we engage with our customers because uh, i think if we are not innovating i think uh, you know we are going to be archaic very soon so so that's that's a challenge uh, that i i think not only i face but i think any marketer today is actually facing which is how do you just keep abreast with all the things which are happening, you know, today? I think that's that's also a, a, a big challenge. Do you agree? That I feel just now there's a constant expectation for um, performance optimization of everything, and it's, con it's yes. constant needs to be optimized, um, which is great that we can we can do it, but there's a lot of pressure there. Um, whereas before you would leave something for a bit longer to see what it was doing, but you know, like five seconds later, how can we make it better? seems to be the norm at the moment. <laughs> uh, 
I, I agree with you. I think uh, when uh, you know, if I, I if I speak about digital marketing, just five years back, uh, we were looking at optimizing campaigns, possibly weekly. You know, we were looking at data. You know, having review uh, reviews with our agency, looking at data on a week on week basis. And today, we are literally doing it real time, or you know, even at an hourly basis, where we are saying, "Oh, how can we you know improve the bid?" or you know why is the conversion rate dropping or uh, you know why is the view on that video so low so that's that's the evolution that we've seen in less than 5 years right so uh, uh, it's exciting to see that you know that focus on on optimization definitely but it br- brings in a lot of pressure as well right i mean and i so agree with you when you talk about data because i think earlier the challenge when we were in using a lot of traditional media uh, we knew that there was just a certain set of data we would get you know from our partners or from the different channels but today i think i i really find it sometimes challenging as a marketer to 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 decide which one to choose which data to see and which one to ignore and 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 you really don't know whether one of this is actually important and might become you know like your your game changing experience for your marketing campaign very good um we're here obviously talking about your your award uh, wins as as individuals um obviously at the same time you're representing your companies i know a couple of you said this is the first podcast you've done but i'm guessing you've done presentations and and various uh, other um you know speaking events etc H- how do you view yourself um as an external spokesperson for your company Sh- shona let's start with you on this one I think having been at the bank for a long time, um, I do get the opportunity to speak on behalf of the bank, um, which is great because I'm I'm very proud of the work that we do and I'm proud of the people that I work with um, and what we do. So I, I think that we, we all want to be able to represent um, our businesses and um, put out into the world, you know, how, the important work that we're doing. Um, and I think this award helps that as well because I think it's, it's definitely... Um, got that to more people. I've certainly been speaking to a lot more people than I would have done before and able to talk about the business a lot more. Um, I'm, I'm sure um, you both feel the same way. One of the things that, again, like th- those reflection moments, like for me thinking that that I work at Google, that I work at YouTube, it's, I think about it a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's such a privilege. It's, it's something that I never thought it could happen. Um, so um, I always feel just lucky and, you know, reflecting on, on the award itself and, and a lot of it, it's, it's really the, you know, what got me that award, it's a lot of the work that I've done. Um, so really taking that sense of, of pride, um, that sense of, you know, respect for the company and, and, and the culture and the values and the leadership. And, you know, it's something that I, I personally take it very seriously, right? Like, the, the fact that I have this opportunity, I, I respect that a lot. And, and it's something that, that I try to carry um, whenever I'm speaking with someone, regardless if it is, you know, someone that is trying to get an internship at Google or in tech, you know, making sure that I um, reflect those values and everything that I've learned in the company that I can take that, you know, and, and take my knowledge and share that experience with that person or if it's a corporate presentation. Um, so that sense of, of pride and, and respect for, for the opportunity, it's something that I just try to reflect in, in any speaking engagement or whenever I'm writing um, a thought leadership piece um, or just connecting with people who want to work in the company. I, I, I like that idea of respect, actually. Sorry to, to chip it because no, no, obviously okay. I... I respect the the Tesco brand and the Tesco name. And I think that I forget sometimes when I'm speaking to new people coming into the business, how excited they are to work with the Tesco brand and work with the, again, I said we're drowning in data, with the the data that we have and what we can do with it. Um, So yeah, respecting it's a really nice way to to phrase that. I like that. Sorry for (laughs) chipping in. No, no, please do. Um, Agnesha, how about yourself? Uh, So actually, uh, my journey with 3M is fairly new. Uh, so I've, it's been less than two years that I've actually joined them. And uh, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, one of the things that I've done with my career is I have also been very, very experimentative. You know, like I started with with an agency, then I moved to client side and uh, where I was working more on the B2C side of the business. And, you know, after a few years of doing B2C and, you know, gaining regional experience, I thought, uh, I want to be a holistic marketer. Why not take up a new challenge and why not try 
try B2B because uh, I think uh, in Asia also, B2B is seeing a lot of uh, business transformation today. And a lot of big companies uh, want to get onto this entire, you know, the digital journey, which, you know, they have possibly not, you know, possibly ignored for, 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 for quite some time. And uh, I thought it was it was an exciting time to be in a company like this because uh, B2B is big. You know, we, when we talk about uh, customer lifetime value or even customer value uh, versus a B2C customer, we're literally talking sometimes million, millions of dollars per customer, right? That's the value of one customer. So how do I add value? You know, and, and, and I know everybody will say at the end of the day, it's marketing, but there are differences in the way you do B2B and, and B2C today. So uh, I have been learning a lot. Uh, one thing that I, uh, you know, as a part of 3M that I really appreciate is uh, number one, the focus on innovation. I think that's something that 3M is known globally as well. And I think 3M has played a very important role even in uh, during the time of the pandemic, right? Which is uh, whether it's you know the different kind of solutions that uh, the company has uh, to offer, uh, the way they have revamped their supply chain, so I think it it was uh, it was very uh, uh, you know humbling to see the kind of things that the company was also doing to to adjust to the new uh, environment and, and and to the new changes, and I think that made me uh, possibly feel very, very, uh, you know, good to be a part of a company which which is, you know, so compassionate about what's happening around the world and also wanting to work towards, you know, a, a better goal. So so that's what I, I, I think I've loved about 3M. And whenever I, you know, I'm representing the company at, at events, when I'm, when I'm speaking, I think a lot of people, uh, when they speak to me, they ask me, oh, so how is it, you know, like uh, uh, working with 3M, it's, it's, uh, the business is so diverse. I think, you know, we, we go from consumer products to, to 5G technologies and semiconductors. That's how diverse the business is. So, you know, how do you keep yourself abreast? Like, uh, you know, how do you switch? I said, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure I have an answer for that, but uh, definitely uh, I think it's, it's one of those really exciting things about your job, right? Which is you're not working on just one product or one solution, but every day you learn something new. So, well, so that's what, uh, you know no, sorry, makes go me go back to the job yeah no well I was I was going to ask I mean what's the best piece of advice you've had when it comes to marketing whether it's at 3M or or prior to that customer first okay. so I think that's that's the most important advice that that I've got and I think I try to uh, bring that into a different type uh, you know different conversations that we have with 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 uh, stakeholders who are at different levels. So whether it's uh, your intern, whether it's your agency, whether uh, it's your bosses, or even if it's your senior leadership, uh, I've I've seen in you know, a lot of companies where you know people would want to do something because it's a trend. You know, it's it's the it's the new thing, it's the in thing. But is that what your customer wants? So so I I always go back to that as a marketer, which is. Is that what is relevant to your customer? Is that what your customer really wants? Is that something that you're doing is going to add value to your customer's life? So uh, that's how all my marketing campaigns have also been built. Uh, and that's the approach which I always look at following. How about yourself, Elizabeth? Um, definitely the user first. And, and I think that's very, at least in my everyday, that's, that's a motto. Um, that I live by. I would say in, in, in terms of having a career in marketing, um, if I can pivot a little bit there, is this mindset of education, right? Like never stop learning. Um, that's something that I, it's one of the things that I love the most um, about the, the Google culture is the fact that I'm always learning. Everyone, every marketer, um, in the entire organization is is so smart. Everyone that I have the opportunity to interact, and then everyone outside of the organization, you know, have amazing perspectives. And I think that's you know exactly why we're here. And never never stop learning. It's something that I have mentors that have said to me so many times. Um, you know, and 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 beyond just like the day to day work, just learning from people's experiences. I think that is so important. Finding the right 
uh, mentors, you know, that they don't necessarily need to be your, your manager, um, but finding just people inside and outside of the organization that can really nurture your, you, you know, your knowledge and that can really bring new perspectives and, and help you grow. Um, and, and that's something that I try to share with other people um, inside and outside of the organization. It's something that I live by. It's, it's picking up a book. It's, you know, I try to go to a lot of marketing conferences. I, you know, every day I go to LinkedIn and, and, and read um, an article um, and really just continue, tra continue training, you know, as, 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 as we were talking before, um, the, the marketing field is evolving. I think we need to be ready to see it um, continue changing over the next years. Um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen uh, this year. So that opportunity um, and that mindset of continued growth, continued education, um, you know, working with our peers just to see, just to pick their brain, right? Like even if you're working on a campaign, maybe there's an opportunity that I might have to pick, you know, pick up the phone and call Shona and say, you know, I'm here in the UK, we're launching this campaign. What do you think? You know, like you never know how our community can can um, bring us together and can help you can help us improve the work that we do and can help us improve um, our professional journeys. You mentioned, you know, mentors and managers and going to marketing conferences and reading articles on LinkedIn. I mean, who at the moment inspires you to do what you do? Oh, so many people. Um, I have a great manager. Um, she's my role model. Um, I've, you know, I've known her since since I started in the company, and I'm so lucky that she's my manager now. Um, from outside, there's so many amazing CMOs. Um, Antonio Lucio is one that I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan. I'm a huge fan. He is the former CMO from Facebook. Um, and in addition to just amazing campaigns and, and brand and marketing work that he has done in his career. Um, I do love how he, I do love his leadership approach. He lives from the front, from the middle, from the back. It's um, a very inclusive marketer. He, he's one that, um, he's the one executive that if I can have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or a meal with, he, he is definitely one of them. I also take a lot of inspiration um, from non-marketers. Um, and this is a completely different podcast, uh, but I take a lot of inspiration from actually from a lot of chefs and cooks because um, I do like uh, the precision. You know, I, I, I do observe a lot how uh, how a chef um, or how, you know, when I'm looking at a cooking book and a recipe, you know, you, you can make it once, it's going to be okay, but, you know, it takes time to perfect something. So I, there, there are chefs like Melissa King, she's a, she's a U.S. chef, um, Thomas Keller, who is renowned, uh, which also a big fan. Um, and I do pay attention a lot in you know, YouTube videos or like cooking books that they have. Um, or some of it, like Melissa King, she does some cooking classes and I've, I've attended couple of them. And I just look at, you know, the precision and the patience. And that's something that I try to think, you know, how, what I was mentioning before about slowing down. Um, that's also something that I think a lot about. How do I take time to perfect an idea? How do I take time to perfect um, the execution of something? So I take a lot of inspiration from that, but there's so many amazing leaders and executives um, that I follow a lot of them on Twitter. Um, so it's, it's really nice that we can be connected that way and learn sure. from them. I think I actually, linking back to what you were saying about every day is sort of a learning opportunity and a school day. I, I, I'm inspired every day by people in my team that I work with. Um, and it's maybe just in a meeting and all of a sudden they have a great way of storytelling. And I go, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that the next time um, I have to tell a story. Or I'm in a meeting and someone has a really credible way of explaining a subject matter piece of expertise. Um, and that really inspires me to, you know, up my game basically for the next time I'm in that situation. So I think we can take inspiration from from everyone that we work with. And um, how about you? How about you, Ignatia? So I uh, I think uh, 3M has a very similar culture. If I have to say, you know, uh, uh, if I had to echo what Elizabeth was saying about about learning, about about growth, uh, and and as a company, there is a lot of focus where all of us are encouraged to upskill ourselves, um, where we are encouraged to put in, you know, we have dedicated hours within within a week where we can actually just focus on 
wanting to learn a new skill which will help us uh, in our jobs so i think which is very important because and as marketers i think all of us agreed today that we definitely need to uh, just keep on growing and learning because the world is so dynamic you know uh, so so that's something that i really love about 3m and i think in terms of uh, people or leaders uh, or even marketers who i really look up to i think uh, as a student i have uh, been fan girling on on peter drucker for the longest time because that's what i have read and grown up in in my college years but i think in the recent few years uh, i i do spend a lot of time uh, reading up on you know the concepts that malcolm gladwell has or even even said golden has you know the the, the way they want to look at a problem differently i think that that, that approach really uh, is very helpful and as marketers i think it's always uh, important for us to look at a problem differently right which is uh, how do we change our approach how do we uh, you know think out of the box and i have felt that some of these uh, you know the uh, the books the blogs the podcasts that they they have it really helps in sparking that imagination at least for me and it helps me bring in new concepts you know when i'm discussing with my team when we are brainstorming for a new campaign etc and and it it brings an excitement with with you know with the, when you, whenever you have a new concept and you're trying to speak to different people so that's how i i possibly uh, one is of course the company's cultural element to encourage learning and uh, that is something that i as an individual have also followed and the other thing is that you know these uh, um, external influences of people who i have been looking up to for years and who i still keep on going back to uh, that helps me you know stay focused stay motivated uh, in all the marketing activities that i do i hope you're talking to podcasting i hope you i hope you've added the c suite podcast to your playlist now yes not, i not, have no no <laughs> pre- no pressure on any of you obviously um <laughs> We, we're, we're closing this this uh, episode off. I, I just want to look forward. Obviously, um, I mean, what what excites you about being in marketing at the moment, Sh- Shona? Let's um, let's come to you on this one. I mean, the the learning every day is a learning opportunity. Is is what excites me in marketing. I think that ultimately we're solving problems every day. Every day, every campaign is a new challenge and a new problem to be solved, and I love that. And that's not changed in my whole career in marketing. Um, And the very fact that every week, every month, every year, we're learning new skills and new tech and new ways to interpret data. Um, I I just love the fact that how fast paced that is. And I I get to solve problems every day, um, which is great. It's really, really great. Elizabeth? I can't imagine being in anything else, to be honest. Sure. Elizabeth, how about you? Um, I also can't imagine being in any other field. I, I think we're very spoiled and lucky and... And, you know, it's, it's just, it's a special field, you know, we can be creative, but we can also be very data oriented. Um, and I love the fact that you can really flex your brain muscles and, and do so many different things. And that's one of the things that I personally love. And, and the one thing that, you know, gives me the fuel every day, I think is the creativity piece in, in the creativity component of the work that we do um, is that we do have the opportunity to bring joy to someone, right? We have the opportunity to help people's lives, you know, with many of the products that, that, that we sell or that we, that we market. We, we really have the opportunity to provide information to people in the way that we do that is through being creative, right? Um, I'm not a painter, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't have any special talent, but I do like the fact that I can, you know, have this wonderful idea or, or work with, you know, people in my team and peers that might have wonderful ideas. And then we work together to, to bring them to life. And I think when we see um, a piece of ad or, you know, a bill or whatever, and when you see people reacting to it, you see people talking about it. Um, you see people, uh, you know, just knowing what it is. It's something that I, I relate a lot to. And it goes back to this thinking of I don't know you know some I don't I I don't think a lot about oh my gosh I work at YouTube is you know whenever I go home for Christmas I have nieces and nephews and they watch a lot of YouTube content right um, yes, yeah. and they when see when they see me wearing um, a YouTube t-shirt or when they you know they're watching a video and I talk to them about like that content creator that they're watching and or or when I see someone which happens a lot tells me 
you know, I learned how to do X on YouTube, you know, and, and, and that's changing people's lives. Or when you hear people saying, I, you know, I created this business because I learned this on YouTube. And I think that's very powerful. So that, that keeps me excited about the work that I personally do is just continue to be creative, continue to bring in great ideas that can help people be happy, bring them joy and, and, and learn something. Uh, so I agree with both of them, right? So marketing is such a beautiful combination of art and science uh, where, you know, your creativity has no bounds. And of course, there is now with uh, new technology with, you know, omni-channel marketing, there is, of course, a lot of data which is there, right? So that science component again comes in. Uh, I think uh, for me as a marketer, something that is uh, very satisfying is, you know, the kind of work that we do and how it helps in improving people's life, uh, how it helps in, uh, uh, you know, making better decisions for them, which, which changes their lives. I think that the kind of influence we, we have with the work that we do, uh, I, I think that's one thing which, which I think I'm really proud of. And I, you know, I would love to be a marketer because of that, because I, I see the difference that my work can can bring to everyone um just very quickly because and i'm conscious of, of time but d- despite everything that's going on and um you know it's great to hear obviously your excitement about the role but are, are you feeling positive for the rest of of 2021 at least you know while while we still are you know have this pandemic <laughs> on our hands you're laughing there agnesha what, what what's your thoughts on that <laughs> uh, I think uh, everyone is very positive. You know, we, we just had a, a massive team bonding session where people across a- Asia just connected. I think uh, late last week, we were 500 of us on a Zoom call and uh, it was amazing. I, I don't think we've ever done uh, something like this uh, before. Everyone is, I think, very positive. Uh, uh, 2020 has been challenging for everyone. Uh, this this year is is more of uh, potential and promise is what I feel, and uh, people have learned a lot last year. So I think this year looks, although some of the challenges from 2020 will remain, but I still feel people are now more mentally prepared to to you know to to deal with those challenges. So I'm I'm very positive because I think I have learned a lot last year, and so have a lot of my colleagues and peers. And we just hope we, we continue to keep our focus and momentum and make 2021 a good year for, for the company as well as for us. Yeah, I found out yesterday that in Scotland, the schools are going back um, in two weeks. So I'm very positive. You're very happy. Um, very <laughs> about the year ahead um, without that, that, that juggle. But no, I, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. I think we did at the bank, we delivered so many wonderful things for customers um, last year to help them. And it was really, we've learned a lot about the benefit of, of just doing the right thing and helping our customer with, you know, payment breaks and extensions and, you know, voluntary gift cards and, and wonderful things to help our customers. And we want to take that in to this year and beyond um, and that pivot to, you know, to value. I think I'm really excited about being in the middle of that for, for, for the bank. I, I, Russell, I just wanted to add one point. I think one thing which is very promising about 2020 for me is that as a, as a digital marketer for the longest time, I really had to push ideas and tell people, why don't you invest in digital? Why don't you try this, this idea? And, and then boom, there is, there is 2020. Nah, and then it's, everybody it's, totally wants to agree. Everyone <laughs> wants to. Yeah, no, it's, it, is, it has helped in that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that mind shift uh, uh, or mindset change, which, you know, as a marketer I have, or, or, or as a digital marketer that I've been wanting to drive, say for the last four to five years, where I'm literally going and pitching to, you know, internal stakeholders, you know, give me more funding, uh, you know, can I try, can I experiment with this? And uh, it's, it's got mixed responses versus today where I, I suddenly feel that, you know, a lot of my colleagues who are not in marketing, uh, possibly have a lot more respect for the work that we do and are constantly reaching out that, you know, how can we try something new? What can we do differently? How can you help me? And and honestly, I am very happy with that change because that's something that, you know, I've been really working towards and with, with possibly like a 50, 50% success rate versus now where people are proactively coming and approaching that, can, can, can we do a digital campaign? And, and 
that's amazing so so that's at least one positive thing that has come out of 2020 for me as a marketer good good stuff okay um i, I know it's it's uh, elizabeth has um a, a meeting to to get to very quickly and i know it's um must be quite late at night now in in singapore for you ignisha so i've got one final question and um, before i let you go um kind of putting you on the spot a little i mentioned in my intro that women in marketing's mission is to educate inspire connect recognize and empower women through the cycle of their lives um You've all been recognized in their 10th annual awards as some of the best marketing leaders amongst your peers. So using, you know, the experience that you've gained and the marketing skills that you've learned, how do you hope to inspire other women into leadership roles, whether that's, you know, marketing or not, um, you know, and, you know, maybe help achieve those, you know, that mission that women and marketing have. So very quickly, I'm going to quickly go around my virtual table here. So Elizabeth, let's um, come to you first. That's a great question. Um, and, and I think now that, that we won the award, we definitely that's this is another mission and, and set of values that we need to carry on throughout uh, our careers and in lives. Uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that you can't be what you can see. So that's why I'm here chatting with you guys. That's why I try to give back to my communities. You know, I'm, I'm Hispanic from, from the Dominican Republic. So I try to find ways just to give back to my community more than anything. Uh, whenever I have the opportunity to speak to students, um, you know, and that's something that I encourage anyone to do. I wish I had people talking to me when I was in, in high school and in college and really sharing like what's possible. I think that's the that's that's the that's what we need to sell we're marketers i think that's something that we we can do very well just really shine the light on on all the opportunities what's possible nothing it's nothing it's impossible really passionate about any career passionate about becoming a leader in any organization or in any industry i think that's possible but it, it goes back to the education the training and surrounding yourself with the right set of people. So something that I do plan to continue doing is just sharing my knowledge, sharing my time. I think those are the two most valuable things that I owned. And, and those are things that I'm, you know, willing to share with people, you know, from students to anyone who just has a question on, you know, social media, like Twitter or LinkedIn, whenever I will have the opportunity to, um, write about my story or share my story in, you know, another podcast or presentation, whatever that is, just continue giving back in the sense of sharing um, advice, my experience, and, and hopefully um, someone feels inspired and motivated to, to do, you know, to follow a similar path. Great. Agnesha? So I agree with, with Elizabeth here, which is, I think, knowledge and time are very, very important. And uh, I've, trying, I've been trying in, in my own way, which is within 3M, we actually have a mentoring program. So I, I do uh, mentor women in digital marketing um, within the company. Other than that, externally also. So I think there have been quite a lot of people in the recent years who've seen me, uh, you know, make... Uh, make some progress in my career who've reached out to me that, you know, they want to get into digital. They want to learn, uh, you know, how can they start? And I think I have looked at uh, uh, trying to guide them based on my experience. Uh, and, and, and I definitely wish to continue doing that. I've been actually thinking about how I could, uh, you know, come up with certain blogs or something like that, which would help uh, guide people to make that shift from, uh, you know, traditional marketers or just marketers into into digital marketers, and what are some of the simple things that that they could do? Because I think every time people think about uh, people think about digital marketing, they think about uh, oh, I have to spend so much on on certain courses, or you know, I have to invest so much, and um, you know, do I have the the financial uh, ability to do that? And and I think my first uh, a response to that is that today there are so many learning modules available where the only investment required is your time. So uh, that's the approach that I have always taken, which is see what is available, keep your mind open, uh, be a learner for life, and that will help you be a good marketer. So I'm, I'm trying to do my bit and I hope I, as, I, as I progress in my career, uh, that focus remains and, and you know, uh, we as women support each other as much as possible. And finally, Shona, um, last word with you then. Yeah, I think that, I mean, personally, I'm very passionate about um, 
encouraging um, not just women but anyone who works part-time to develop their career and um, I um, was able to get my head off role um, while working part-time um, and I think that um, as a business we're trying to do a lot more to encourage that so I'm trying to help set up job share and um, prove to the business you know um, what, what a great opportunity is for both the individuals and the business um, and I think that um, the last thing just to add is that you know podcasts like this the women in marketing us all connecting um, and certainly after the the awards um, and the shortlist was was released there was lots of chatter and lots of go you know back and forward and connecting with each other and I think more things like that that we can do um, and share that out um is, is for the good so yeah so thank you so much for for having us um because this is a great way to connect with each other Brilliant. Well, no, thank you. So th thank you, all three of you for, for uh, joining uh, the show. So Elizabeth, Agnesha, Shona, um, that, that's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks also uh, to Women in Marketing for helping uh, bring the three of you together for the podcast. Um, if you want to find out more about the Women in Marketing uh, group and uh, their awards, simply visit womeninmarketing.org.uk. Um, in the meantime, we hope you've uh, enjoyed and been inspired, hopefully, by this episode. We'd love to hear any comments you may have about uh, the discussion today and if you'd like to contribute you can do that on the facebook page uh, twitter feed youtube or uh, linkedin and instagram pages they are all linked from the top of the website at csuitepodcast.com uh, where you'll also find all our previous shows and supporting show notes plus links to where you can subscribe for automatic downloads of each episode by your favorite podcast app and if you've enjoyed the podcast please do give us a positive rating and review um don't forget we've got competitions on the website uh, too uh, we regularly give away newly released business books and um, so please do check those out there's a link at the uh, top of the nav bar uh, to our latest uh, one at the moment uh, finally if you'd like to get in touch with the show you can do that via the contact form on the website as well uh, you can connect with me on twitter using at ross goldsmith or you can find me on linkedin but for now thanks for listening and goodbye